Hi students, welcome to the platform of eGurukul and Dr. Bhatia Medical Coaching Institute. I am Dr. Ramyasri, your Obdine Guru. So in this video, I'm going to speak about some of the instruments guys. Right, so a very important, so some instruments MCQs will discuss. So what is the instrument which you are seeing here and I have an MCQ on that instrument here. Which of the following statement is wrong about the following instrument? So which instrument is this? So it is designed by Marion Sims for visualization of fistula. It has two plates of equal size on both sides. It is used to visualize cervical and the anterior vaginal wall lesions. It is used in the operations like DNC. So now this instrument is the Sim speculum. So this instrument is the Sim speculum. So it's Sims bivalve speculum. So this is mainly designed by Marion Sims. So actually he has designed this for visualization of fistula. This is an absolutely correct statement. So he has designed it for the visualization of the fistula. Actually there is something called Sims triad. So Sims triad is Sims position, Sims speculum and uh, Sims saucerization for the fistula. So it has two blades but both blades are of not equal size guys. So one side it will be larger, one side it will be smaller. So it has two plates of equal size is a wrong statement. It is used to visualize cervical and anterior vaginal wall lesions. Absolutely correct. So use it with anterior vaginal wall retractor to visualize any cervical or anterior vaginal wall lesions. But the only thing is that you require another person to hold this when you are doing some surgeries inside. So it's used in the operations like DNC. Right. So it's the Sims bivalve speculum. Another speculum which we commonly use in gynecological procedures is Cuscos self-retaining speculum. So Cuscos bivalve self-retaining speculum. So this is bivalve self-retaining spe speculum. Okay. So this is a self-retaining speculum. So basically what happens is you have a, a knob and this knob you can tighten. And the both both uh, this blades retract the anterior and posterior vaginal wall. So then you can visualize the cervix, take the biopsy of the cervix, or put a copper tea or uh, take a pap smear. So it is a self-retaining. You don't require anybody to hold this also for you. It retains. You just have to fix the screw, and it's wonderful. So this is Cusco's bivalve speculum, right? Next picture. What will be the management if uterus is perforated with the following instrument? So first and foremost, what is this instrument? So this is a uterine curette. This is a uterine curette. So it has a serrations in the center for the better grip. It has one end which is sharp and one end which is blunt. So this is a blunt end. This is a sharp end. So sharp end we use for gynecological curettages. Blunt end we use for Ops, dilatation and curettages. So whenever the uterus is perforated with a uterine curette, you have to stop the procedure. Watch the signs of hemoperitoneum. Continue the procedure. Immediate laparoscopy or yeah, immediate laparotomy. So this is a pretty big diameter. So you know, you have to definitely stop the procedure and do immediate laparoscopy. You can always do laparoscopy first. You know, but if there is a hemoperitoneum, patient is hemodynamically un unstable, then you can go for laparotomy. Otherwise, you can always choose laparoscopy over laparotomy. So when patient is hemodynamically unstable, we go for laparotomy. Okay. Many students get confused between uterine curette and anterior vaginal wall retractor. So this is the anterior vaginal wall retractor. So anterior vaginal wall retractor is little angulated. It has serrations in the end because it has to fit to the vaginal rugosities. So this has serrations in the center. This has serrations in the end to fit in the vaginal rugosities. And this is angulated. So don't get confused. This is the anterior vaginal wall tractor and this is the uterine curate. Yes, so these are some forceps, the Ramsey's forceps, tooth and non-tooth. Basically, non-tooth are or traumatic, tooth are mainly to pick up the tissues and have a better grip. So these are called Ramsey's forceps. 
So forceps are mainly used to grasp the tissue edges. Non-tooth are less traumatic, mainly used in peritoneal cavities. Tooth are holding the skin edges. So this is the needle holding forceps. So it has a clamp mechanism so that the law, uh, so that the needle will be placed in the uh, needle will be in place, right? And uh, uh, this needle holding forceps is mainly useful, and it is you know the clamp mechanism and the proper grip helps us to manipulate the needle however we want, right? And jaw is also textured and is small. Jaw is textured and small. This is the Alice forceps. It's a traumatic forceps. It has multiple teeth at the edge, and it has the claw, claw clamp. So this is for holding the tissues. It's a traumatic forceps, right? So edges of the tissues, rectus sheath, all those places we use this Alice forceps. So it's ratcheted. They have hinged teeth, mainly to retract the subcuticular tissues, right? You cannot use this for holding soft tissues for long time. It can cause damage. Now, this is a, a traumatic forceps. You don't see any teeth here. And it is like a hollow. What is this? So, this is a Babcock forceps. It has a traumatic tips and is useful for holding the tissues like fallopian tube, ovaries, bowel, appendix. So what did all what all I showed you now? We saw needle holding forceps, Alice forceps, and this is the Babcock's forceps. Next, this is Green Armitage. So Green Armitage at the end, if you see, there is a triangle. There is a triangle. It's mainly hemostatic in nature. It's used for holding the uterine edges during cesarean. Okay. So this is a green armitage. Sponge holding forceps. We all know the sponge holding forceps for cleaning and uh, for uh, painting. We use this, right? Rampley sponge holding forceps. Valsalam. So valsalam again is tooth. Valsalam is used for holding the cervix in non-pregnant. Sponge holding can be used for holding the pregnant cervix. Whereas valsalam is used for holding non-pregnant cervix. So it's again traumatic forceps. So valsalam can also be used to grasp a fibroid polyp. They are having a pelvic curve. So can you see they are having a pelvic curve. So they can be single tooth or multiple tooth. So here I am showing you the single tooth valsalam forceps. Last forceps which I wanted to show you is ovum forceps. So ovum forceps is like a cup. Again, this is a traumatic. So this does not have a lock, guys. Unlike all of the forceps you have seen, it is not having a lock. So this is used for dilatation and evacuation. It's a traumatic, right? So that's about some instruments, which are important instruments I thought will be useful for you all of you. So it's a short video on the instruments. Thank you for watching. Keep studying. All the best. Thank you.